Sepsis is recognized as a global health problem and is the leading cause of non-cardiac death in U.S. hospitals. In sepsis, harmful bacteria or other germs can trigger an uncontrolled immune response. The immune system goes into overdrive to fight infection, and the chemicals it releases into the blood trigger widespread inflammation, attacking healthy tissues and organs. Timely medical intervention is paramount. So Mr. Hector came into the hospital with shoulder pain. Uh, he had had some previous shoulder work done. He was very short of breath, breathing about 30 times a minute. So he had a CT scan which showed that there's potentially an infection in the lung or a clot in the lung. It looked like his joint in that shoulder, left shoulder was infected and the suspicion was he had some bacteria in his blood which were then collecting on a valve of a heart and throwing off clots, basically uh, floating cavities from infection. He first got intubated, which means having a breathing tube placed in, a, in his lungs to help ventilate his lungs. Then, because of the pressure of the ventilator, some of those cavities burst and air leaked out of his lung into his chest cavity. With early recognition and aggressive antibiotic therapy, many people can recover from mild sepsis. However, approximately one third of these patients go on to develop a severe and highly fatal form referred to as septic shock. Shock happens sometimes pretty rapidly and he did go into multi-organ failure which included his kidneys not making any urine and he needed dialysis. His heart wasn't functioning well which needed blood pressure medicines and that's why we needed to put him on something more than we were already able to do. Standard of care alone wasn't going to cut it for him. So uh, we threw the kitchen sink at him and we were hoping something would stick. Worse still, there is a less common form of septic shock called endotoxic septic shock that is even more lethal and difficult to treat. It affects more than 120,000 Americans each year and no specific therapy is available. This fact continues to attract the attention of researchers and clinicians worldwide, many with a shared determination to combat this condition head on. As we started getting better in, in, the, in the last two decades of giving good resuscitation therapy to our patients who presented to the emergency department or got sick in the hospital and we were able to give them early antibiotics, which is key, early IV fluid resuscitation, which is key, uh, we started making an improvement in mortality. However, there is a group uh, of patients that didn't respond to this. They start developing organ failure regardless of what we are able to offer them. And so more and more research started looking at what type of uh, chemicals in, in the blood or what type of biomarkers could be driving this. And we've identified over the you know, last decade or so that this subgroup of patients have a high level of endotoxin. Endotoxin is released when bacteria die or cross the gastrointestinal barrier and end up in the bloodstream. Treatments do not address the root cause of the condition and are focused on supportive measures. Although endotoxic shock is less common, it is by far the deadliest. Uh, historically, if we got stuck, we would continue to support the organs, but oftentimes we would have to approach the family and say, We've done everything that we can, and despite all the advances in technology and antibiotics and antimicrobials and um, organ support, these patients do succumb to their death. Um, and it is uh, frustrating and horrible. Dr. John Kellum, a leading critical care specialist at UPMC for over 30 years, and now the chief medical officer at Spectral Medical, has been at the forefront of this evolving research. Uh, when we see 
patients who have this more malignant form of septic shock. Um, they have uh, organ failures, their platelets fall, they develop coagulopathy. Uh, we suspect uh, that it may be due to, um, to endotoxemia. Uh, the problem is, is that other conditions uh, and other molecules can cause a condition that looks exactly the same. Now it gets better quickly, um, but you don't want to be treating a patient and then saying, well, I wish I would have done something 12 hours ago or 24 hours ago because they're not getting better. You want to know that this is a patient who's not going to get better. So you really need a test. You really need an assay. You can't just identify them clinically. So one of our observations in the intensive care unit uh, was these, these patients all, did not all have uh, bacteria that were alive or viable um, uh, at the time they were so sick. So we felt there were other drivers of this sepsis cascade, and we were particularly interested in the role of endotoxin. So we felt it was very important to develop an assay that would be useful in the intensive care unit to rapidly identify those patients in septic shock who had high levels of endotoxin in their bloodstream. We then developed uh, an assay that could be done in whole blood and give you the answer within 30 minutes. The Endotoxin Activity Assay EAA, which is available for clinical use, makes it possible to measure the ability of endotoxin to activate the immune system and thus identify patients with endotoxic septic shock. Uh, this test was actually developed many years ago. Uh, it's already FDA approved, but it never really found a home in clinical practice for sepsis because in the United States, at least, there's no treatment. It turns out that the Japanese had invented a treatment for endotoxemic septic shock more than 30 years ago. It's the most common form uh, of uh, endotoxin removal uh, is to use this uh, polymyxin B, it's an old antibiotic uh, that's attached to a dialysis-like cartridge and blood is just perfused through the device and endotoxin is removed. The problem is that in the United States and in other countries that don't have this available, uh, the only way it's going to get regulatory approval is to show that it actually works. Researchers, physicians, investigators, and experts from more than 20 U.S. hospitals and universities are meeting in Charlotte, North Carolina to discuss a groundbreaking clinical trial already in progress. The TIGRIS trial is a randomized control study of the use of the PMX cartridge versus standard of care for patients with septic shock and endotoxemia. There's been a lot of, of research in endotoxin over decades, but the approach to identifying this and this marker now is something that can be done at the bedside, something that's very uh, easily accessible, and treatment rather than using other chemicals or medications to block endotoxin, we can now actually remove it from the blood. Spectral's vision is to provide a personalized approach to patients with sepsis that will enable vastly improved outcomes from endotoxic septic shock by combining a targeted diagnostic test and a novel therapy. What we have found uh, with, with our assay in combination with this therapy uh, is there is a particular group of patients that responds very well uh, to endotoxin removal. So we are focusing on that group of patients uh, that has a treatable amount of endotoxin in their bloodstream uh, and looking at the effects of our therapeutic intervention. My site was the number one enrolling site for a previous trial. Uh, so sepsis is huge for us. When we see someone that really doesn't look like they're gonna make it and we can offer them just one more piece for survival, and then when you have survival, it's fantastic. Feels like a win. This therapy offers new hope, new promise for a subset of patients who really have an almost, um, you know, a lethal diagnosis at this point. He was certainly sick enough for the trial, and he would have died that day if he had not done everything we could. They elected to have the trial for hemoperfusion on a compassionate basis. And within a week of 
the hemoperfusion, he was off the ventilator, and uh, the next week he went home. I think people are leaving here today with hope um, that they that the physicians uh, can in fact make a difference in the outcome of these patients uh, and save lives. As we've seen and heard today, there is optimism for improved outcomes and a renewed determination to win the battle against endotoxic septic shock. And if you ask this group, the outlook is brighter. I think it's amazing that all the individuals here, the team, you guys are the ones who are gonna get this across the line. And not just do something good, but ultimately do something great. For more information on the subject discussed today, visit spectraldx.com. And as always, you can go to our website, thebalancingact.com.